just uh, for doing the mock um, assessment together. Um, what we're going to do now, we're going to do a set of oral questions uh, just so you can talk me through the day. Um, I'll be asking you a few things. Um, yeah. Talking about the two different clients you worked on. Um, yeah. I was saying that today you did one client because I think you did your second uh, person on the block, didn't you, instead? Yes. Okay, so first of all then, let, let's start off with client one. So I think yep. your restyle and your colour, was that, yep. was that right? The first one? Yes. Okay, great. So first of all, let's start off with the consultation process. So had, yep. you, met your, had you met your client before today? I had, yes. And was that to do any types of tests or any kind of consultation? Yes, so she came into my salon in Cheam um, and we did a incompatibility test for her because her hair was quite weak when she first came to me, mm -hmm. um, but luckily that all came back okay and we did a patch test for her. Patch test being, was that like a skin test, was it? A skin test, yes, just behind the ear with the, the permanent ear. range. And, what, and why did you do that? Why did you do the skin test? What were you checking for? to check that my client wasn't allergic to the colour at all. Okay, great, thank you. Um, you say you also mentioned that you did an incompatibility test as well. Yes. Yeah, what, what were you checking for with the incompatibility test? To check that her hair was strong enough for the Enlightener Lightning product, which okay. thankfully it was. <laughs> okay, so that was your incompatibility test and then you say you did, you did your skin test. Um, did you do any other types of tests either before, um, so when you when she came to the salon, or did you do any t other types of tests when she was in the salon? I did a strand test when I had finished my last foil mm -hmm. um, to see how much the first foil had li lifted. Um, any other tests on the day, or was it just the strand test you did during? J just the strand test on the day. Okay. What What was the hair condition like? How What was the prosody like on the hair? It was quite porous um, towards the ends, I think, where it had been lightened before. But the part that I was lightening was her virgin hair, the natural colour. So I didn't touch the ends at all. I completely left those out. Okay. And, and so how could you tell then? You say it was dry on the ends. Did you feel the ends of the hair then, did you, uh, during the consultation? Yes, I did. Oh, so, sorry. So I'd say that I did a elasticity test. Okay. Um, just to check the ends of the hair okay, and so they were a lot weaker than the root of the hair. Okay, okay. And so you did, um, so you did an elasticity test. Any other types of tests you did? A porosity test. You did a porosity test as well, yeah? Okay. So and what, what part, how did you do your porosity test? The, I did the porosity test by just running my fingers up her hair. Okay, great. Um, to see how porous it was. How porous the hair. So you're checking the hair's porosity, right? Okay. And then you say your elasticity test you did as well. How did you do that? Um, just by grabbing a bit of hair and stretching it to see if it would return to its natural state. Okay, okay great. All right, thank you. So there were the different types of tests. And so you met you met your client before. Um, did you use any kind of yeah. any kind of visual aids to kind of decide on how you were going to do the, the cut and colour? Yes. Um, oh, sorry. Does that mean like pictures and stuff? Right? Yeah. So yeah. So it could be uh, pictures. It could be some kind of uh, you know something from a magazine, or it may have been like some pictures from the internet, colour chart things. So she did. She did show me a picture um, of a really blonde style, which I had to explain wasn't exactly possible with her hair, but I hope, well, I tried to get her as light as I could um, without damaging the hair's condition. Cool. Um, and then when, so moving on then, so you did the colour first, didn't you see, obviously you've done your consultation, you then started on your colour. Uh, can you... Yep. You, can you talk me through your colour choice? What what was what colours did you use on your on your client? I used the permanent. Uh, sorry, I used the Enlightener Lightning product for a T section to help brighten up her natural natural colour. Yeah. And because she wanted grey coverage as well, we did a tint in between with the permanent range, 
where I did a 9N and I added some lights VB in there as her hair threw off a lot of warmth. So what does your VB do? Does that, what does that neutralise? That helps to neutralise the orange yellow tones in the hair, which her hair did have quite a lot of. Okay. And what peroxide strength, strength did you use with the um, with your permanent colour? With my permanent colour, I used a 20 vowel. Yeah, and why did you decide to use 20 vowel? Uh, because 20 vowel is the peroxide we use for grey coverage. Okay, and uh, what peroxide did you use with your enlightener? I used a 20 vowel as well because we needed two levels of lift. Okay, great. Right, so that was the colour. Um, then you put yeah. foils in, as you said, do you say you did a T-section of foils? And then in between, yes. through with your permanent tint? Yep. Yeah. And how long did you leave it on there for? Um, the first foils were left on probably for about an hour. And then mm -hmm. I, sorry, for, they were left on for an hour. Um, and then the last sections that I put on for were left on for half an hour. Okay. The last foils that I did, sorry, were left on for half an hour. Okay. Um, uh, okay, so that, that was your kind of choice, that was your development time. You mentioned you did a strand test as well. Was that to yeah. check? What was the reason for the strand test? Um, so to check how much it had lifted by the time I'd finished my last foil and okay. it had lifted quite a lot and it had been an hour, so I, I took those out. Okay, right. So you took them out, so then obviously the colour was ready to be removed and, and shampooed. Um, what shampoo yes. did you use um, for your client? I used the Colour Conserve shampoo. Okay. And the conditioner as well? I used the damage remedy conditioner because of the pros because of the ends of her hair were needed the damage remedy. Okay. And what was the benefit of using the colour conserve shampoo? The benefit of using the colour conserve shampoo was to maintain the colour okay, when so taking she... it off. Okay, so what so the colour lasts a bit longer? Yes. Yeah. Okay, right. And then can you talk me through um, massage movements you use during the shampoo? Yes, so I used rotary and effleurage. Okay, rotary and effleurage. And then how about your conditioning? Did you use any conditioning massage movements as well? Um, I did do a head massage, so I, I did that with a penetrating conditioner. Okay, right. So, okay, so, so you've done your shampoo now, that's all been removed. Um, you're about yeah. Style. So what, what were your cutting techniques you used today for your restyle? Um, my cutting techniques were club cutting, mm -hmm. point, point cutting mm -hmm. and some free, freehand work. Okay, great. And then can you just talk me through the haircut just briefly? How did you approach your haircut? Um, what do you mean by that, Brad? Sorry. No, that's all right. Okay, so for instance, did you, start, did you start at the back? Did you cut the first and then start with the graduation? Oh, okay. Um, yes, yeah, so I started by club cutting. So I started by cutting quite a bit of the length off. Mm -hmm. And then I went and did my layer, my graduation. Okay. And then did you, I think, did you sort of personalise the hair once it has dried a little bit as well? Did you do some texturising work or anything? Or? Yes, so I did some texturising um, and using the point cutting technique um, mm -hmm. just to help blend everything together. Uh, I did some free hand, hand work round the back of her hairline just to tidy everything up okay, for right, a more sharper you. look. Okay. And then obviously that was your blow dry for your above shoulder. Um, so yes. what, what products did you use for your blow dry for your above? Shoulder? I used some volumizing tonic um, to help get her root lift because mm -hmm. she liked a quite voluminous blow dry. Mm -hmm. And I used um, heat protector, obviously, before I blow dried. So that would be the damage control from the Brilliant range mm -hmm. and some smoothing products. I, I went for the Smooth Infusion Style Prep okay. for so her ends. Okay, so right, great. So that's what you did um, for your styling wise. And then any, any aftercare advice that you recommended to your clients? So for instance, when to come back to the salon, particular products that she should be using at home? Yes, so I recommended her the Nutriplenish range actually. Mm -hmm. um, 
because I feel it gave, gives a little bit more moisture than the damage remedy. So in future, when she comes back, I will use the neutral Plenish on her. Um, and I told her to come back in about six weeks for another T-section, as I don't want to do a full head just yet, uh, because obviously she does, she does want to be blonde, but I don't want to do a full head just yet until her condition improves. Hence why I've recommended the neutral Plenish range. All right, thanks for that. So that was that was our first uh, client, and then obviously because of um, COVID, we we decided for your second one. I think you you started where well, you decided um, to do the the blockhead instead of doing a second client. So this was your yes. Client. So um, this was this was am I right thinking this was your below shoulder? It was a uh, curly blow dry, and then you secured it with pin curls. Is that right? Yes. That, that was your set. So could you talk me through what products you used um, for your your long hair um, blow dry? Yes, so I used heat protector again, obviously, so the damage control. Mm -hmm. um, I used um, Femoliant. To oh, yes, yeah. Yep, yeah, I used Femoliant to um, help give make the hair look really nice and full as most blow dryers I do on real people, <laughs> they like, mm -hmm. obviously they like it to hold and they like a really full bouncy look. Mm -hmm. um, and then I did use some damaged daily hair repair just for the ends to help smooth everything, keep everything nice and smooth. So, right. so I noticed that you were working up the head and I noticed you securing it with, with pink owls as you were working along. Did you the hair to cool down before you took those roll um, those pink curls out yes so by the time i'd got to the top of the hair and um, the back pin curls were ready to take out so i began taking them out and brushing them through and by the time i'd got to the top the top ones were cool also so all together the back okay. ones had a long time to cool down uh, and what, what the, what's the benefit of, of allowing the hair to cool down before you take out the rollers or pink curl, sorry. Allowing the hair to set in place and cool down um, after I've blow dried it, obviously, to make it last longer. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, was the hair in alpha keratin or beta keratin when you when you finished it? Alpha keratin. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. So that that was that was what you used for your for your um starting. Then you put the hair up, didn't you? Yes. Just can you just briefly talk me through how you did the hair up? Yes. So I sectioned away the front bits of the hair. I put the back part into a ponytail, um, leaving the top bit out of the ponytail. Sorry. And um, mm -hmm. I then added a bun underneath the ponytail, wrapped the ponytail around the bun did a lot of back combing um, at the top of the hair, which I then added into the bum in a crisscross section. Um, mm -hmm. So none of the bun was showing. I then back combed the sides of the hair at the top to just give a little bit of lift at the front and plaited those front parts and then added that on top of my bun to give it a prettier finished look. Great. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Brad.